sports and uh, definitely if you want to see more sports you can always tune in later in the day for sports matters uh, right now we'll be going straight into our second topical issue for the day and that is on uh, a smooth transition from you know the political scenes towards 2023 and we're doing that uh, discussion with barrister tony of Oyota. welcome to the studio Barrister. it's my pleasure thank you for having me good You're morning welcome. good, good, good morning. morning all right so um 2023 it's uh looming over us so to speak and uh over the past few weeks within a month or a month and a half we've seen um an upsurge of uh, interest into the presidency, basically. And uh, it's now like a free-for-all terrain. Everybody's coming out. Uh, so much money flaunted or uh, wealth being flaunted through uh, purchase of nomination forms. Now, um, with our economy being kind of battered, do you think this is the best approach towards Nigerians or whoever is going in for that presidential seat to use, uh, knowing that uh, people have always said corruption uh, sets us back and we need someone better, which doesn't seem to be the case. So how does it look to you? Well, let me start by saying that um, the numerical strength of the or the numbers of um, those interested in the presidency of the country is actually not enough. I'm sure you are interested. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yes, I'm sure I'm interested too, and I'm sure you are interested. Sure. The uh, ultimate ambition of an average citizen of any country, if given that opportunity, is to superintend over the affairs of that country. Yes. So for me, uh, I don't have problem with anybody being interested in becoming the president of the country. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's not the issue. Um, the issue, uh, then you also talked about uh, money being flaunted. Yes. Uh, I think I also want to tell you that um, um, all over the world, uh, politics is one expensive venture. Uh, we don't have to be pretentious about it. Uh, we, we are just looking at it vis-a-vis -vis individuals, um, uh, pockets, the economy and all those stuff exactly. like that. Uh, but don't forget that um, at that level, presidency all over the world, you must be stupendously wealthy. There's no, there's no pretense about it. Even in America, uh, even in the United Kingdom and all those stuff like that. Uh, it's not meant for the poor. Mm. Unapologetically too, let's, let's not be pretentious about it. Um, yes, you now begin to bring some other argument as to uh, is that a foreclosure to other people who are less privileged? It's not a foreclosure. Mm -hmm. uh, APC said 100 million, PDP said 50 million, and the other party that said free. Exactly. I hope you understand yeah. that. So you choose which platform you want to run. Uh, it's an individual choice. Okay. You want to go to APC, be ready for the money. Or you want to go to PDP, be ready for the money. You don't want to go, there's the, uh, the one Moga Lewis, um, young people's whatever, mm. whatever. It's as good as free, you know. So for me, the issue is not the money. I, I see it as um, APC trying to use that to rake in money for the purpose of prosecuting their own election. Oh. Because at the end of the day, I expect that plus minus, they should be able to rake a minimum of 30 billion. Uh, because as we speak, we have about 20, 24, 25 um, candidates. Uh, candidates. Yeah, That's to about 2.4, 2.5 billion. Um, yes, on its own. Mm -hmm. uh, so you now talk about gubernatorial. If you have an average of two in the state at 50, 50 million, that's 100 million for each state. 100 million into 36, then divide it by two. You, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. You have the House of Reps at state level, uh, federal, senate, and all those stuff like that. So plus minus, we expect that at this, at the end of the day, they should be looking at between uh, 30 and 50 billion, which will go a long way in helping them to prosecute their own campaign. Okay. So for me, it's an internal affair. It's a voluntary no fit injuria. Um, if you think you can't afford it, don't bother your head about it. Um, uh, 
you remember that INEC even deregistered some parties that didn't do well the last time. Yeah. Yeah. So if if um, you know politics and you know how expensive it is, I'm sure you'll be interested in contesting for the president of Nigeria if God decides to bless you with maybe ten billion dollars. You know, and you have fulfilled everything you think you want to fulfill. You have cars, you have you are done with you know every basic things of life. And you sit down and say, I want to participate. You are free to what is hundred million when you have maybe You know why we are confused? We've never seen this area of contenders. Never in the history of presidential... No, the truth is that some of them will drop by the wayside. Uh, some of them are meant to break the wings of um, uh, those that are seen to be top contenders. Uh, Bola Tinumbu, uh, Vice President um, Oshibaju, Amechi. Those are the three major contenders in APC. Every other person in APC, they are just, as far as I'm concerned, um, they are just, um, you know, either pawn uh, or alternatively just a bargaining power. You know, I bought 400 million. You want me to step down for you? It's a simple thing. So what's going, what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do for me? For what me are you to going to do? Step down? It's a simple thing. And then you the are other one, bought the form for 100 the million. The other one that we're worried about is that the country for now is in debt. So much debt. And everyone seems to be very poor and seeing people no, 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 that no. Let's, 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 um, I understand your line of argument 100% and I align with you. Um, some of that will say that uh, these people are thieves. They are stealing the money. And yeah, because most like of that. them are actually uh, you know, serving public, public officials. Public officers and mm -hmm. officials. And I agree with that. I concede with that, you know. I concede with it to the extent that, um, um, you know, based on what we believe uh, circumstantial evidence also has established the fact that um, if you are a civil servant you cannot work for 100 you can't work for a lifetime and have a service of 100 million, 100 million yes. it's not possible whether you are president of the country you are governor whatever office you occupy the maximum is eight years your salary a monument and allowances cannot give you a savings of 100 million. That is that we wish we yeah. continue. I think now, we need to add that. That is a rebuttable assumption. Yes. Now, why it is rebuttable is that there are some of them that have been very wealthy before they came into politics. Okay. You know, they, they, they were really, really doing well. Before some of they, them. Some of them, yeah. yes. I, I, said, I said some of them, not all of not them. Not all of them. Some of them are doing excellently well before they came into politics. Those set of people, 100 million is as good as nothing to them. Now, but before no. we finally go, let me not cut you short. There's a problem. The problem is about zoning and consensus. Some parts of the country is saying this time we should come to this area. And some are saying, whether you like it or not, the game of politics is a game of numbers. And because we have that numerical strength, we must retain it. What's your take on that? Now, you see, for me, Nigerian politics is so unique. Uh, it's unique. And unfortunately, the southerners many a times play into the hand of the northerners because of their disunity. Now, when it is time for the north to produce their own presidential candidate, they don't have problem with a north central, north east, north west, whatever. They don't have, they just unanimously, either PDP, whatever platform they want to fly. Now, but when it comes to the South, you now have the dichotomy of Southwest and Southeast. And um, that is to the advantage of the North. And I think that that is one area that um, the South had to agree. Yes, I, I, I understand the fact that, unlike in the North, where you have this, um, this uh, regional language, let me put it like that, the Hausa language. Uh, whatever other language you speak in the north, Hausa is um, so your central. First language, yes, it's your yes. first language. But in the south here, it's it's so multifarious to the extent that um, yes, you say Hausa, you say Yorubas, and you say the Igbos and the like. But you now have the Niger Delta there causing its own linguistic confusion at the end of the day. So you, you now have this major people that are distinct and autonom autonomous on their own. So if you ask me, I will tell you that the wisdom there is as simple as 
let the south and uh, the southwest and the southeast has its own regional rotational policy you know for me not they can decide on what they want to do because it is they are relatively united but the southwest and the southeast should be able to say okay once it comes to the south let's look at who was the last president where did the last region now, and as it is obas and you have been there so if you ask me i will be looking at a mogalu you know depending um or an obi you know or tony of definitely <laughs> <laughs> it's a free space for everybody all right and that's how we call it a wrap on today's show thank you barrister tony it's for being pleasure. with us and we will have a more extended conversation on this topic it's i okay. know no by some uh, ray of hope you'll make yourself available to us all right thank you so much for being with us throughout the week and we wish you a lovely week ahead and before we go don't forget, all through this weekend and beyond, you can have Super Screen on the go with you. Just download our app from the Google Play Store at Super Screen or through the Avo app, channel 110, click on it, and you've got Super Screen. Don't forget, we're also all over social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, YouTube for your views. For On YouTube, it's at Super Screen. On uh, Facebook, and uh, Instagram is SuperScreenNG, and on Twitter is SuperScreenTVNG. Ooh, that was a mouthful. And um, you can always place ads and promotions to cover your events, place adverts on any of our shows, send us a direct message, and we'll get across to you. All right, from me, Jennifer, do have a lovely weekend, and from Tim. And because it's a weekend, what's a Friday, I will always say, thank God it's Friday. Let's leave you with this entertainment. You can enjoy yourself.